Rosalind Washington, founded in 1886 by the Northern Pacific Railroad. Coal had been discovered on railroad property, and they promptly ran a spur line into the region. The miners and immigrants came in droves. They settled the community to the rapid growth of about 1,200 people in the short span of only two years. Number one, Mr. Ronald. What's the trouble, Swede? Looks like an explosion, sir. Probably deep down, yeah. I can hardly hear it. It's a small one, I'm sure. <sighs> Bad? So far, I see no injuries, only coughing and gagging. Good. Get the count, Swede. Yeah. <laughs> well, the count is good. Everybody is out, yeah. There are no injuries. Fine, get a team together, volunteers. Get them to check the damages. Have them report back to me. We don't want to lose any more than 15 minutes here. Have the rest of the men go back to work. Mr. Ronald, sir. The men, they won't work. They won't go back to work. That is, they're not going to go back into the mine, sir. They're striking. You tell them animals that they have one minute to get back into that mine. You have just one minute to get back to work. You will either work or get off this mine. Do you understand me? Now, get back to work. And I mean now! You have just 15 seconds to get back to work. There were Irishmen and Scotsmen and Welshmen, and they came with their families to build a new life in the Northwest. They came to build homes. They came to work in the mines. But the conditions at the Roslyn mines were poor. The hours were long and hard. So the miners set about to make a change. They demanded shorter hours, mid-shift breaks, and more safety precautions. Perhaps the strike of 1888 was their only hope for change. But to history, the change to come was the migration of blacks to the Pacific Northwest. Morning. Morning. Could you tell me where I could find, um, Mr. Uh, Alexander Rowell, the superintendent of the uh, Roswell Mine? Oh, yeah. In here? Yeah. You're a pretty country. Yeah. Thank you. I'm Jim Shepherdson. I'm here to see Mr. Ronald. Jefferson? I'm Mr. Ronald. How do you do? How are you, sir? Sit down. Sit down, please. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed your journey. Now, Mr. Shepherdson, I'm a man that likes to get down to cases. Now, I have need of your service. You have a reputation of getting the job done. I hope that we can come to terms. Well, I hope so. Otherwise, that trip out here from Illinois is just going to be a waste of time, ain't it? Waste of your time, a waste of my time. And neither of us wants that. Now then, Mr. Shepherdson, I need men. Men who are not afraid to work. Miners, I need miners. There's a mine out there full of coal. Now, my people want that coal. Oh, that's what they pay me for. 
Northern's a good company. They pay well. They'll pay you well. I'll pay top dollar for good miners. Just get them here. Now, I believe a man ought to have a chance to work his worth. So I'm setting no limit on wages. I'll pay top dollar, like I said. The more coal a man brings out, the more I'll pay. You know what? Looks like to me you got a strike on your hands. And them folks I bring up here, they're going to be strike breakers. That's going to mean trouble. You afraid of trouble? No, no. But then again, I ain't working the mine. And you won't have the trouble. Let me tell you something. You see, I sell services, Mr. Rowe. I don't sell people. Now, if I ask anybody to come up here, I'm going to have to feel responsible for them. Uh, you might say that uh, that's one of my weaknesses. Well, they'll have protection. There won't be any trouble. Not for you, not for them. We hired the Teal Detective Agency. They'll supply armed protection. All we need. Very good. Ah, don't worry about that, Mr. Shepherdson. They work for Northern Pacific. They do what they're told. So I know what it's like, that savage craze of them mob of men. They jumped me and broke my leg, tied me to the railroad track, and just left me there to die. The railroad men pulled me off the track. Yes, so I owe them a debt of trust that they well deserve. Your people will get the protection that they need. So, how soon? How soon can I expect results? How soon can you deliver? some Negro miners in to work here in Roslyn. I'm telling you straight out for sure. Well, there's a train due here about 3, right? Is, is that right? Yeah, there's a train due about 3.18. Well, they'll probably be on that one. Okay, okay. Well, I'm going to be right here waiting. No Negro going to come here and take my job. to shoot from a moving train, Mark. Besides, that's just a hunting party, son. You don't need to get excited about it.
Yes, sir. Me and the boys, bro. Me and the boys. We was wondering. Yeah. I mean, what kind of place is this here Rosler? I mean, for us. What kind of people spend good money to bring us all the way up here uh, to work in their minds? Yeah. Sir, I don't pretend to know the reasons for a lot of the things that the white folk do. My, it's not that I mistrust your word, but it just don't make much sense. This load of folk is going to cost somebody some money. Why? Might that be just a little bit more than we ought to know about? Now, Sam Weaver, I don't lie to no man. And they're gonna pay you a good working wage. What I told you is true. That mine got more coal than you can want a day. So there's plenty of work, there's plenty of food. More food than you can eat. But now, we ain't got a lot of houses. So what we all got to do, we got to double the families up so we can build ourselves more houses. Also, they only got one church set aside for us. But now we can work that out when we get down there. Now, it gets mighty cold. How cold? I mean cold, Parker. If you think it was cold back in Illinois, just imagine yourself being twice as cold as you ever been in your life. <laughs> see, I figure maybe I'm the first black man in these parts. At least wise the white folk tell me I'm the first one there to see. So what I'm trying to tell you is, I don't believe there's going to be a whole lot of discrimination against black folks because they ain't never seen that many of us. But now, I got to tell you, we're going to be strike breakers. Do you hear me? They got an organized labor union in the mind, and we're going to be strike breakers. So it might mean a lot of trouble. Well, we've been strike breakers all our lives, one way or another. I expect we'll always have that problem. <laughs> The white folk decide to just let us be. What I'm worried about is engines. I mean, it's a hostile. I heard them stories about them raids. Now, here's how I feel about the engines, Parker. This is my advice on that matter. Now, you don't go looking for them. They won't come looking for you. <laughs> <laughs> I say we show them niggers they ain't welcome here at the Roslyn Mine. Yeah. The first one who wants to do some digging can start right here with his own grave. Yeah. Yeah. Are we going to let them people come here and take our jobs? No. No. I say we make this a warning to all strike breakers. Yeah. 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 good warning, too. Yeah. Yeah. Then listen, boys. We got some hard times ahead of us. Already that fat Ronald is trying to talk some of the boys into coming back to the mines. But we're gonna show them. We're gonna hold out. If we all stick together, we can get all those fat backs to give us everything we want. We on time, Mr. Conductor? <laughs> oh, we right on time, Matt. That was a whistle I heard, wasn't it? Till they're in the mines before we get them. Are you with me? Come on, let's go.
By March 1889, some 200 blacks were working in the mines. By the end of that year, more men and their families began to arrive. The number had increased to 400. By the summer of 1890, some of the whites began drifting back to work. him, Sam. He must have ran all the way home. His little heart was pounding so hard it nearly frightened him. He wanted to tell you about it himself, but he was so tired. Ooh, and the engine just gave Mark the bird. Did he say anything? I don't know. Mark was so excited and he kept saying, and he gave me a bird over and over till he fell asleep. It's good for the children. This country. Someday it'll be even better. How's it at the mine? Oh, it's okay. Just wish the hours weren't so long. More and more whites coming back to work every day. They're not easy to work with. But they just keep coming back just the same. Maybe someday we'll all just be miners. Someday. for was to give you a special invite to the big celebration on the 4th. The 4th? Yeah. What you drinking in there, Sam? The 4th and come and gone. Or oh, you talking about the 4th that's coming next year? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I mean August 4th. It's gonna be a grand celebration. That's the West Indian Emancipation Day. We plan on really doing it upright. Y'all is all invited. It's gonna be bigger than ever this year. Right? And we'll all be there. Yeah. <laughs> Come on up, 
attention. Just one minute here. I got something I want to tell you. Now, I know you didn't come here to hear me talk. You came here to eat. Now, I understand that. But I want to say something anyway. I want to say to all of you here a real sincere thank you. Because it has not been easy for us. We've come a long way. And I'm real proud of it. One more thing. I want to introduce you to some of the new members of our community. I want you to meet Charlie Westman. So tie down there. Now Charlie's gonna open up a new restaurant here. And I want you to meet J.E. Bedell. J.E. here he is. J.E. Yeah, J.E. is our new postman. And I want you to say hello to Henry Terrell. Henry Terrell now is going to, uh, Henry is going to open up a little evening place. It's going to be dancing girls and things. Enjoy yourself. I'm just very pleased about the whole thing. Thank you. Sam? Sam Weaver. Well, looky here. Hey, Weaver, you're starting your boy off to work a little young, aren't you? Mark. You forgot your lunch, Dad. I sure did, Mark. Thank you, son. The lunch is almost over. Dad, can I still walk? Can I go down in the mine with you? Now, what you want to go down there for? Ain't nothing down there but work. What's the matter, Sam? You afraid the boy will see how lazy you are? Why don't you let him come on down in the mine and take a look inside? I expect you'll have him working here before long. How old are you, boy? My name is Mark. Mark Weaver, and I'm ten and a half. And Mark Weaver, right. Come on, come on, let him go down. Why not? Oh, boy! <sighs> now, Mark. Mark, you know, working in a mine is a dangerous job, so you do what I tell you, and you don't ask why. It's hard work, too. Well, he sure is dark in here. There is a dream of exodus, of a journey in chariots. There are hopes of freedom's endless bounds. There are restitutions of peace and grace, and the promise of the greatest revelation of all. For the worker, an investing labor done. For the farmer, an ever wave of grain. For the shackled, a pass to run. And to sunken hearts and painful tears, the courage of forgiving. May God have mercy on us all. Many of the black miners died and were buried in Roslyn. Presently, there are only three black families living here. One is the Craven family. Mrs. Ethel Craven, who is the direct descendant of a miner who came to Roslyn on that first train. Today, her grandson is the mayor of Roslyn, Washington. My name is Ethel F. Craven. This is my husband's grave, Samuel Craven, who came from Texas in 1922 to mine coal. He worked till 1956, and he passed away in 1969 in July. <laughs> 